Hi everyone, I'm Carol Keller, Independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Illinois in the United States. And I have for you today two card alternatives for this month's Paper Pumpkin Kit, which is called All the Little Things. Let's get started. Here is just a quick look at this month's kit. As always, there's a sneak peek to next month's kit called Exploring in Color, and it will be featuring some of our new, at least some of our new in colors for the upcoming 2324 catalog. And this is a sneak peek of some of them, but I'm excited to see what it actually looks like in color using those colors. And then they remind you that in this kit this month, there is a free box organizer. It is right here. And so once you finish making the cards, you can use the box to store your stampin' spots. Very exciting. I'm so, so glad that they did that. The ink color for this month is Shaded Spruce. And here is a quick look at the stamps. I'm grateful for all the little things you do. Celebrate today. Enjoy your day and with deepest sympathy, plus several others. And we are going to be using those. Remember always to check the back and make sure you have all your components. And there are some alternatives besides the one that I'll be making or that you may see on other demonstrators, um, YouTube channels or websites or whatever. So that is it. This is what the cards look like if you make them as they come. And just like I did last month, I am actually going to not use any of those components. So if you wanted to make those cards just the way they come, you could. Or if you wanted to do other alternatives, my goal, just like it was last month, is to use the stamps so that you can kind of make an unlimited number of cards. And so I'll talk to you about how to do that. And I think I won't necessarily do that every month, but I did. That's kind of where I was working from this month. And I hopefully you will like my cards. So I will um, put this away and show you card number one. Here is my first card. And again, like I said, I wanted to use the some of the stamps in the kit, so we've used a bunch of them. And I didn't quite make my own pattern paper, but maybe you could call it that. I certainly did it for the top part and then carried through one of the stamps on the, the label, the tag. So I started with just a basic white card base and I would recommend using thick white because normally I add layers and so it is thicker, but I didn't in this case. So a thick basic white card base may work better. Although the one I'm using today is not thick. I just didn't grab it in time. And so we are going to start by stamping and I'm going to turn it this way just because that was easier for me. Or actually, I'm not going to start with stamping. I'm going to start with the ribbon because I want to put that aside so that it can dry for just a few seconds while we're working on the rest. I'm using my blend so it does dry pretty quickly but this will help. So I've got a, an extra piece of grid paper that we can work on to use kind of as a scrap. And I have my glittered organdy ribbon. And you can see I started coloring. This is actually left over from that ribbon. So I colored a pretty decent section because I wanted to overlap it behind the tag. So I'm just taking my blend and holding it almost parallel to the paper because you don't want to ruin your tip and we're just gonna color a bunch of it. I didn't measure it or anything. I just made sure that it was long enough that I thought it would work to, uh, like I said, layer a, a few times behind the sentiment. That's probably pretty good. And then I'm gonna put it aside just to let it dry. It does dry very quickly so it shouldn't take long at all and it definitely will be done by the time we are ready to use it on the card so now i'm going to take the card and i did it this way just because that's how i played with it initially and um i kind of like doing that way so you can do it either way but this is what i chose to do so the first stamp i'm going to grab is this one and i'm using crushed curry and so for the stamp i am starting with kind of the kind of straighter end here and stamp once and re-ink every time and then turn it around and kind of fit it in that way. It's all right if there's a little bit of overlap and then the same thing with the next one and the next one and so you should be able to fit five of them and the last one and then we're going to start fitting 
our other stamps kind of in between and overlapping. So next I'm gonna grab Shaded Spruce and another stamp from the set. And now I am gonna turn it this way, whoops. Ink that up. And now I want those emptier spaces to be filled a little bit. So that's where I'm gonna put this one to overlap and fill it in a little bit and turning it. And then once more. And maybe while we're, we've got the shaded spruce, I am going to stamp a scrap that we're gonna cut out for that label. So we've got our sentiment. And actually, even before we do that, let's grab that crush curry again. Probably should have done it all at once. But I like using the lighter color first. And we're just going to stamp that. And then we're going to grab this again. Make sure it's got some good ink. And stamp right over. Then the dies that I used are the sending dies. And I also am gonna cut out a strip. This is actually a strip that's cut down shorter from those same dies. So I am going to cut this out with the one label and then cut another one in. This is Coastal Cabana with the, for the background for the mat. And then this is, again, the crushed curry. So I will cut those out in a minute, but we're gonna finish our stamping first. I'm gonna bring that back in. And I've got the flower stamp from the set, and this we're gonna stamp in Coastal Cabana. And I started off with my first card, I think I did five of the flowers, and I ended up adding a little more. So, I again, trying to fill in the spaces a little bit. So stamping, oh, and this is balmy blue. So I guess we're going with balmy blue this time. <laughs> Sorry about that, I picked the wrong color, but we'll do it in balmy blue. And so that means we'll do this in balmy blue as well. It's just a little bit of a pivot and that's okay. And let's see, I'm trying to decide, maybe one up here, we'll try five and see what it looks like. And then another one right at the end. I think that looks pretty good. I think we're gonna leave this one at five, but if you wanted to, if you really wanted to fill in those spaces, you could obviously add a couple more. That is up to you. While we are stamping, we're gonna do the inside sentiment too. All right, so we have, and I made a mistake, I apologize. The dies that I use for the labels come from the something fancy dies. This one is from the sending dies. Both of those dies sets and stamp sets that com are companions to them are continuing in the new catalog too. So they are available and will continue to be. So I will use the shaded spruce on the inside for the sentiment and the sentiment also comes from the something fancy stamp set. So we've got our little thank you and I am going to put some of those flowers on the inside as well. Or actually, maybe we'll do the same thing. We're gonna bring these in and layer. I'm sort of doing this one off the cuff a little bit. So I'm gonna bring in crushed curry again. And we'll do it here. Then we'll bring in shaded spruce. And last but not least, balmy blue, or if you prefer, use the Coastal Cabana. I can't believe I made that. Oops, it was just sitting right here. But actually, I like both of them. I think either color works. And we'll put that down here. And so then, and I would do the same thing on the outside front corner of the envelope, which I won't do now, but that's what I would do so that everything coordinates. That is all of our stamping. So now it's just finishing it and putting it together. Let me grab this again. Help that to lie flat. All right, so here are the components. I have the bigger label, again, in balmy blue to match, and then both of them obviously nest nicely inside of each other. So I'm gonna put those together with my stamp and seal. Get that centered. And then for this, you can see it is not long enough to go across the card. So all I did was snip it. And I think the hardest part is getting them to be even, but, and to match up here. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna grab my glue dots. 
and put one on the front and bring my card and my label in because I want I know I want it about here and I want it I want the label centered so that looks about right and then I'm going to do the same thing with this one grab a glue dot and then we're going to just slip it in this way again Kind of, and I'm just eyeballing you could use your actually you could use your grid paper and I see it's a little crooked so I'm gonna fix that but I want my label about here and I see that it's lined up here so I'm gonna move it up to this make sure my card is straight whoops And actually, I'm going to put another glue dot on this side because I don't want it to stick up like that. Oh, that's right. Let's put, it's not going to matter. I think I am going to need another glue dot, though. This is not holding well enough. I'm going to put another one on there. Try that again. And now I'm going to take that ribbon that we colored and I'm going to put some glue dots behind. Or no, actually I used my tape runner for this and I felt like it worked really well. I'm going to lay down some glue and I'm going to put it on here as well. Whoops, I'm going to fix that though. And then we're just going to lay the ribbon. So I want it to have a couple of loops. Yeah, oh, I like that. And then we'll cut it at an angle. So we're going to put this on with dimensionals, or maybe not. I actually, when I made this one, I put these on as an afterthought, so they're not on with dimensionals. And I do think I would rather have them lying flat. So I think I'm going to use my tape runner again. And I'm going to make sure I put it over that ribbon to help hold it down. And we're gonna put some on the back of each of these. And again, they're kind of still moving around, so I'm gonna make sure when I lay them on the card that they, I can get them positioned the way I would like, and then they'll hold there. So again, one more time, I want this sort of in the middle. And then let's fix this side. I feel like it needs to come up just a little bit. Sorry, folks. There we go. That's better. And I was thinking, too, I almost want to add another flower on the label. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring in that balmy blue one more time. And grab that flower. And hopefully it's flat enough that it, I can stamp it. I'm just going to put one more. One more flower. And then last but not least, I'm using the bling that comes with the kit. And I believe these are our iridescent rhinestones, which here's a package right here. They look identical. So again, even though, even when you run out of the ones that come with the kit, they're still going to be available in the new catalog, those iridescent rhinestones. So you can purchase them and make more cards. Like I said, that was my objective to make as many cards as possible from the kit, from the stamps. And put a couple of, of the rhinestones here. And then I put another one up here to draw your eye. And I even thought to add a couple more, but I think I'm gonna leave it for now. But you could, you know, maybe even one more on the tag and another one around the card somewhere, but I think I'm gonna leave it with just three. And so that is card number one. All right, and before we get started with card number two, actually, I want to show you what I used, the Something Fancy stamp set, like I said, and the Companion Something Fancy dies. So I used these two for the labels. And then 
I also use the sending dies, which also have a companion stamp set, but I use this for that one piece that spanned the tag in the middle. And now let me show you card number two. Again, using the stamps, but I also incorporated the envelope as I often do. But if you wanted to make multiples, once you are out of envelopes, then you would simply just use some balmy blue cardstock. All right, so let's get started with this one. All right, and as with the first card, I've got a basic white card base. Thick would also work with this one, thick basic white, because the envelope is thinner than cardstock. So I have cut the envelope down to five and a half by four and a quarter, same size as the card front. We're gonna put that on right away with some multi-purpose liquid glue. And now we're gonna do some stamping. So you see for this one, I used some tone on tone for the background. I had first done the strip and the tag, but it looked too plain. So I decided let's incorporate some of those same stamps that we used for card number one, except this time we're just gonna bring in balmy blue. So rather than having contrast, we'll have tone on tone. And I'm kind of estimating where the center is and just stamping across. because it doesn't matter that much, it's gonna be covered up and we're not necessarily looking for it to be exact. And then this one right over, and again, kind of looking for where um, there's white space. For the middle ones, I bumped it up higher because we have that circle, that tag that we're gonna use in the middle. And then um, for the tag, I've got a scrap, again, a basic white that I've been using, as you can see. So maybe we'll stamp in the middle. And I'm gonna bring in Daffodil Delight. And we've got this stamp. And we're gonna stamp our sentiment right over it. And this time we're using the Celebrate Today. And I'm gonna leave this aside because we're gonna need it in a minute. I'm gonna bring in Highland Heather for the sentiment. And then we're just gonna cut this out with the circle punch. I'm using the one and three quarter inch punch. And then for the mat for that circle, I'm using actually the flap of the envelope and a different punch. This is the decorative circle punch, and it is one that is also continuing into the new catalog, I'm happy to say. And so we're just gonna put those two together with some stamp and seal. And then I have the ink pads out because we are making, instead of ribbon, a strip of cardstock. And it is three quarters of an inch by five and a half inches, wide enough for our flower stamp. And I'm gonna bring Balmy Blue back in as well. And we're just going to stamp them in order and just make sure remembering to clean in between. So I stamped the first one and there's a, the flower is not symmetrical. There's one petal that's a little bit smaller. So I put it up on the first one and then again, clean in between. And then I'm gonna go to the Daffodil Delight and turn it down this time. And then go to Balmy Blue. And back to the Highland Heather. And then I think for the inside, we will use, I'm gonna put this aside, we're gonna um, stamp a sentiment on the inside also from the set. And this time we're using Enjoy Your Day. I'm 
really like the font on this set. Love it. And then again, if you wanted to, maybe we'll take the flowers one more time. I am going to bring that balmy blue back in. And we're going to do just three flowers in the corner. Again, varying the colors and turning the stamp around. And I would probably do the same thing as this on the envelope. So we can put our inks away because that is all our stamping. And then we just have to finish putting it together. So I've got my stamp and seal for our faux ribbon. Because that's kind of the idea. Normally we would put ribbon there, but we're putting cardstock in its place. And then for this, I'm going to bump it up with dimensionals. Put one in the middle and then just put a bunch around. Take the paper off. All right, and then we'll center it and making sure we have about the same space with the flowers on each side. That'll help us center it. And we're going to use that bling again because, like I said, we know we have plenty because even when this is gone, we can get some more because they're in the catalog. I'm just grabbing my Take Your Pick tool. In fact, I may use my fingers for this one. I think this time I'm just going to use three of the small ones. That one looks kind of big to me. But I'm just going to center them around the sentiment. Kind of like this. Draw your eye around a little bit. And that is it. That is card number two. Let me bring card number one back in for you to see. I'll bring in both of the color combinations. <laughs> and you can see why I use the balmy blue because I had it out to use for this card. Here, we'll put those together. And so I really like the Coastal Cabana, but I do think both of them look good. Honestly, I think it's just personal preference, which one you like better. So that is up to you. You can use obviously other color combinations. That's the nice part too about just using the stamps. You don't have to use the colors that are in the kit. So I purposely tried to kind of go beyond them, but I hope you like them. Thanks so much for joining me every month. I really appreciate you watching. I appreciate your comments, your positive comments that you leave me. And don't forget to subscribe and to click on the bell and then you'll be notified when I post new videos. I do try to do paper pumpkin alternatives every single month, but I also have other cards, scrapbook pages, home decor items, tips, techniques, all sorts of things that hopefully will interest you and help you to in your own crafting. So thanks again, and I will see you again soon. Happy stamping.